everybody. Welcome back. Okay, so um, I've had some feedback on, on what you guys want to see on the channel, and I've decided uh, before I get too far along in this journal, um, I would go ahead and come on here. There's been a lot of people saying they'd like to see a journal start to finish. So this one is in the works, and I haven't done much um, since making the cover, so I thought, well, this is a great opportunity to go ahead and do that. Now, what I'm going to do is create <coughs> a, a playlist, and I'm going to name it something along the lines of, um, <coughs> excuse me, creating a journal start to finish, something like that. So that way you don't have to weed through, because um, I don't know how many other videos I'll have in between completing this. I just don't know how next week's going to go. Um, so having said that, um, already you know how to, I've got two parts to creating the cover, so so those will be in the playlist uh, once I've created that. Now going inside, I told you I want to make this a two signature because I can see that I'm going to have enough room to do so. Um, so I have already chosen the papers. This is a um, two kits from Calico Collage that I'm working with. I used to uh, design for um, Norella and so um, one of the benefits to working on a design team is, is you have access to those um, kits that you used. <coughs> you know, they're yours once you've completed the project. So um, this was Songbird and I believe I've got a few pieces from uh, One Fine Day. Um, so you can go to um, Calico Collage, her shop on Etsy, and find these. Um, so I've taken some of those, um, some of my tea dyed papers, and then I've just done a mix of old vintage papers because I want this to be um, just a vintage shabby chic theme so I do try to choose my papers um, that go along with the theme. I tend to, that's not always the case, but I do try to keep my my nature ones you know just for the nature type journals or floral types. Um, this is some handmade paper that I've cut down so I've put that in there because that's a nice thick piece and the reason I've done that is um, some of the ladies who journal like to do a bit of uh, mixed media and this will hold you know anything like that. Um, here I've created, I went ahead, I've got a tutorial for this where I make my um, music sheet pockets and what they what it is is they've just You've got an opening on each side, and I put those in and sew them into the signature. Then I've got some tracing paper in here. And then the center of this, I've kept the Edith Holden um, paper. Okay, I know this is going to be a question from people. And I don't know if anybody's told you guys how to do this, but within some books... Not all of them. If they're glued heavily, you, you won't be able to do this. But some books, if you look through... Let me see if I can get one to show you guys. I believe this is one that you can do it with. <laughs> and this is one of the ticks, trip, tips of the trade. And I don't think people want to share this, so I'm going to do it. If you take your book and you can sometimes, now you know this is going to prove me wrong because I'm on camera, you can kind of look up here often and see where the center is. Like I said, this is sure enough going to prove me wrong now that I've got the, yeah, here we are. Now you're going to have to have some really thin, sharp scissors or one of the exacto knives. Mine's really dull so I use my Stampin' Up! because see that blade is super thin. You can see the threads. Okay? So very gently I just come in there and I snip those. And this is how you're seeing people put them pages upright. Um, 
and I figured this out on my own because uh, necessity, you know, you just got to think, well, okay. Now there's another way you can do it. You can hinge a page, but that, it will work, but I just prefer to do it this way if, if I can. Now there are times when some of those really old, old books like this one, let me show you that page there. You can't do that because it's so fragile. Um, so I've just got it, you know, going in the wrong direction. <laughs> but you can take those and hinge them with a, a piece of paper or washi. I have done that in the past on baby journals I've made. I've taken washi tape. And what you do is, is on the edge of that, you just put your washi along there and then tape it to the other sheet and then um, then this would be like your two sheets washi it down here so you've got you end up with a, a couple of strips of the washi or if you've got the wide washi you just use one and then that's what you're going to sew into the signature but you can see look look how that's come out so now if I want to fold that up and stitch it I can make a pocket or if I just want to fold it over like I do with the Edith Holden um, that's that's how you can do that. Now, the the downside is most of the pages are larger than what we make our journals, so you do end up losing some of it. But when I cut these off, I always put them into my little catch-all, and then you can go back and either do the Franken pages with it, or you can um, just use that as you know when you're collaging little snippets and things. Okay, so there's that. Um, you yeah, know, there's just little things that, like I said, I, I n I've never seen anybody showing how to do that. And, you know, I that's, that's how you do it. Okay, so that's the first signature that I've chosen there. And then the same thing with this one. So, <clears throat> before I, I sew them in, and this will be in a, you know, I'll come back in a different video and tell you, you know, show you what I've done. At this point, anything that I want sewn in, like if it's a pocket, if I'm going to do a big pocket on one of the pages, and I usually do one big pocket. If I do a belly band, belly bands are always more secure if you can stitch them at the top and the bottom, I think. Um, I prefer to do that. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes I forget and sew things in and I'm like, oh no, I forgot the belly band. <laughs> so <clears throat> you just give thought to that on what you want to sew into the journal, you know, with the machine before you actually put it you know, sew the signature in. And then the other thing, any decorative um, stitching I want to do along here. And I'm going to, I'm going to look through my um, uh, thread and see what I've got. I know I've got some pink thread and I might, I might do some different colored in this um, journal. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. This is where it can get very difficult when you're trying to do a complete journal on here because you're always conscious of the camera and um, whereas you know the creative process just flows when you're in here um, but it's difficult because where my camera's positioned is right in the middle of my workspace so it's it, it's not easy to do this and that's probably why I did do another one start to finish but it was the fabric cover um, journal and you can go back into I've done a playlist for all my tutorials to try to make it a little bit easier for you guys to find things um, so it's not mixed in amongst all the journal flip throughs um, so what else where was I at I, I just keep getting lost here um, so those are things you want to think about before you actually put this into the cover because it, it, it is much easier, uh, well, it's impossible once you sew this in to then take it to the machine and, and sew anything into it. It's not going to work. Um, <coughs> so that will be the next thing that you'll see me do. And, um, if I do any special uh, little pockets or things, I'll do those in a separate tutorial, but then still link them in so that you can then come back and say, oh yeah, that... I know she's done a tutorial for that particular pocket or whatever. 
But that's where I'm at at this point, and I just thought it's a good time to go ahead and jump on here, and we will create this journal together. And I really, really, the more I, I touch this and uh, look at it, the more I'm, I'm loving this. And I'm going to definitely do this again. That, um, you know, I don't really like to work decoupage. It's just not one of the things I enjoy, but you can't beat the look of it. it I mean, there's nothing like the decoupage covers. They are absolutely gorgeous. But this... I'm so pleased that I toned it down because it now looks super old. And I think these are going to coordinate nice. Now the other thing I, I'm definitely going to do is try to tone these down just a little bit more. They're very vintage already. But I will come in and start doing uh, more inking. I'm going to do some stenciling on this. You'll see that I'm going to stencil. I'm going to stencil, stamp and then do all my sewing, and then when I come back, um, hopefully I will have done that, and I might even get some pockets in so that you can then start seeing how, um, well, I will tell you how I've generally been doing it probably the last six months, is I take a signature, I always just set the six, second signature out of the way because otherwise I get really stressed out. Um, I tend to start working in the front and I'll do a pocket and then I go to the back of the signature and find the place that I want a pocket then I go back because I like them to be equally spaced and the reason I've done that is in the past I've worked my way from front to back and what I have found is I have put so much stuff that by the time I get maybe halfway through that second signature, it's too bulky. And you know you can't keep going on because some people like the really big journals, you know, the alligator mouth journals. I don't like those. That's just me. Um, and so that's why I started doing it this way. I That way I can position where I want that. I go back here, and that way I kind of feel like it's at least equal. It doesn't always work out. Sometimes you might have, I might have one extra tuck spot or something in the front. But it's, you know, they're pretty evenly spaced is what I'm trying to say. Um, and that was just something that I worked on on my own for myself because I don't like them when they get too, too big. Um... It's just, it puts a real strain on the, um, you know, some of those, when you've altered a book, it puts a lot of strain on that uh, spine. And I, I, I just feel like most people who are buying my journals are actually journaling in them. Now, I have done some that I are kind of like, you know, you've done everything so that it really is just a piece of art um, that, that they can look through. But... Having said that, if you're if they if that person's going to be buying it to journal in, I don't want to have packed it full because they're going to be adding, you know, bits and um, pieces that mean something to them with the story that goes along with it. So, anyways, I hope that's helped, guys. That's just a little bit of my thought process behind this. And as I said, I'll start the um, playlist, and you can just go to that when you know, you've got time to work on it as well. So we'll complete this together on here. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. I'm going to do a car boot tomorrow, and fingers crossed I'll get some lace because I need some really delicate laces. I've got some of the big stuff, but I really am in search of this kind of, um, this kind of thing because I love really pretty little, little things I can add to my clusters. Okay, guys, I'm going to go. I'll see you next week. Bye.